What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about how does English Canada feel about French Canada? Now, I did think this topic sounded a bit controversial, but I have to admit, that kind of intrigued me even more. Like, as an American, I don't know anything about the relationship between French Canada and English Canada. I mean, the existence of French Canada is extremely unique. Like, I can't relate to it at all. It's, it's almost like Quebec is a country inside of another country, right? I've heard it described like that before. It has a very unique culture, almost all of its own. And, I, I mean, there's other things here as well. Like, hasn't Quebec tried to become independent from the rest of Canada? It, it voted to become independent, like, twice, right? So there's obviously some complicated aspects to this relationship of French Canada and English Canada. So, you know, as kind of controversial or touchy of a topic this may be, I'm really, really fascinated by this. So I want to take a look at this discussion where these Canadians are going to talk about this exact thing. So, let's take a look. The next question from Sarah Laplante. Laplante, elle parle français. <laughs> Do you think that English Canada hates oh. French Canada, oh. as in Quebec? I'm from Quebec, and I feel like all Canada hates us. <laughs> whoa, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, yeah, this is very touchy. I mean, just the way they phrased this question... I don't know if they're joking, um, but to set, to ask, do, does English Canada hate French Canada? I certainly hope not. I hope nobody hates anybody. And I think at the end of the day, all Canadians feel like they are Canadians. I think this is a very dramatic way of saying, like, what does English Canada feel about French Canada and, and that relationship? Man, yeah. Do you think fr English Canada hates French Canada? Holy cow. I don't think so. I, I guess I don't know. I, I don't... Th I hope that's not true. I <laughs> Let's keep going. Oh, my God. Aww. Ooh, this is kind of a sensitive topic in Canada. On ne vous yeah. déteste pas. Okay, Sarah? Okay. No, yeah. I, yeah, I think <laughs> the short answer is I don't think English Canada hates French Canada. Right. Canada but there is a lot of baggage and context to this conversation. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll sort of like briefly get into it. Interesting. This this is interesting. There's obviously a lot of history here as well. Okay. So their first like instinct is to be like, no, no, which is what my like reflex was, but I'm not Canadian. I don't know about these things. And obviously the views and opinions of everyone here, these guys, me, are just that, our own opinions. You know, everyone's going to think their own thing about this. But, okay, let's keep going. He says no, but it's complicated. <laughs> Sounds like a, a, a relationship or something. Yeah. This isn't a conversation how do we explain about this the to, politics of French Canada. How do we explain this to someone living in Iowa? Yeah, so perfect, when perfect. He... How, how do you explain this to, like, an American who doesn't... I don't understand. European settlers first came over to Canada. There were British and French colonies. And then they fought... And to really oversimplify <laughs> and then things, they fought. the British won, but they said, hey, New France area over right. here, you can kind of do your own thing. Just... I, I know a little bit of my French Canadian history and Canadian history. A little bit. Some of this sounds familiar. New France and all that. Okay. Some degree. Mm -hmm. There is definitely like a French identity and culture preserved within Canada. Yeah. Yes. That way. Yeah. Uh, in more recent history, and not that long ago, like I remember this as a, I remember hearing about this as a kid. I think in the early 90s, mm -hmm. there was a referendum and Quebec, the province of Quebec, where the French Canadians are, they had a vote on if they should separate from Canada. Right. So I have, I have heard about this. That is substantial. Like, uh, no matter how you view this, like that is a statement. Literally putting it to a vote hey, are we, we're going to separate from the rest of Canada and become sovereign or independent, our own country. Like, Quebec would become its own country inside of Canada. That'd be really interesting. Um, but this did not pass. 
I, I actually want to hear more about this. Like, how close was this vote? And the vote was like 51% we want to stay mm. to 49% we want to leave. Holy cow. Oh, my God. That's insane. Like, <laughs> how close it is. <laughs> I feel like I'm really digging myself my own grave here. The, putting it to a vote, like, that's not insane. I understand Quebec wanted to do that, and they have probably have good reasons and to want to do that. Um, it's insane how close that vote was. That's what I mean. Like, 1% difference changed the course of history. Less than 1% difference between whether Quebec was sovereign or not. That is so insanely close. 50.58% said no thanks. That is so close, I can't get over that. So what I'm thinking here is this is not necessarily like Quebec saying, ah, forget Canada, forget that. No, that's I, I don't like Canada, boo. It's not like that. It's more like Quebec is saying, you know, guys, we got our own culture going on here. We, we, we got the whole French thing going on and we have a long history that's like very unique to us and our culture. And I, it, there just seemed to be a lot of differences here and maybe it would just make sense if we were our own country because we're different. I think it's more that rather than like any kind of animosity towards the rest of Canada, right? I, I could, I, obviously I'm like trying to take the optimistic approach here, the diplomatic um, explanation for all this, but I, I would think that's how it would go, right? Let's keep, I don't know. Let's keep going. I think a Ouch. lot of Anglo English Canadians remember that because it's almost like knowing your partner came like 49% close to breaking up with you. True. And wanting to leave, you True. know? Yeah. So I think there is some <laughs> mental baggage from that still, even though. Right, right. Even if Quebec didn't mean anything, didn't mean anything by it, like nothing against Canada, but we want to be our own country. Even if it was meant in that way, there's only like, there's going to be people out there, Canadians, who are like, hey, you want to leave us because you don't like us. So we don't like you. Like that kind of, that it's easy to see that kind of thought process forming. I think that's what they're saying. You know, like in, in contemporary Canadian politics, there was really no discussion about okay. Quebec separating okay. from. Uh, so, so this is not even a discussion, really like on any serious level anymore. Okay, well, there you go. So this is all, this is so fascinating to me. And I'm really, I'm really walking on my tippy toes here, trying not to assume anything because I, I don't know anything about this and haven't lived this uh, Canadian experience uh, at all. So let's keep going. <laughs> or something from Canada. It feels like that was a long time ago, but I think there is sort of that baggage in the back of your mind. Sure. And then I think... Quebecers are very proud of their French identity within Canada. Right. And I think they can also be quite sensitive to that okay. French identity within Canada. Okay. So even at times mm -hmm. where English Canada might have some valid criticisms or if an English writer in a big English newspaper would dare to talk about like corruption in French politics, I, I think French Canada is very sensitive to that sort of narrative or anything that could be perceived as insulting to, Fran uh, to the French identity in Canada. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I think anybody would be, like, touchy or sensitive about criticism coming their way. Maybe French Canada uh, kind of feels like they're somewhat like a minority within Canada, and criticism targeted towards them is kind of like everyone ganging up on them or something like that. I, I don't mean to like assume what French Canadians think or anything, but uh, it, it's kind of all I can do because I'm just watching a YouTube video, trying to put the pieces together here. I can't relate to this much at all. Um, I mean, here in the United States, there was a time where Texas was talking about seceding and becoming an, its own independent country, leaving the United States. And there was a mixture, a mixed response from the rest of America 
people going like, oh, screw you, Texas, we don't need you. Some people are like, good for you, man. Good for you. Get out of here. Like, I wish I could join you. You know, you get all types of responses to that. <laughs> Anyway, I feel like I'm kind of treading on weird ground here, but I guess I, I, yeah. I should summarize it in the sense that I think a lot of English-speaking Canada really likes the fact that Quebec is a part of Canada. Right. And they bring a lot to the table, especially from, like, a cultural perspective. And a... That's what I would think right there. I'm glad he got to this point. Uh, I'm glad he said that, because make no mistake, first and foremost, I would think most Canadians are like, French Canada is a really cool part of Canadian culture. It makes, it's really unique. It adds a lot to our country. It's a awesome, his, like, history in existence. Like, it's a really cool thing about Canada that there's French Canadians and French Canadian culture. That's really cool. Linguistic perspective. Like, I like knowing I am not French, but I learned how to speak French as a child. Ah. And I still do at work sometimes. I'll speak French. Oh. And I, I like using it, and it allows you to speak with more people. You can communicate in different ways. Obviously, yeah. I'm not an expert at it, but I don't know if people know this, but in Canada, technically, according to certain laws, if you print packaging on a product, like in order to sell something in a yeah. store, it has to have both English and French labeling on the product. But that's Right, right. Uh, I did not know that for the longest time, but now I know that's like everywhere in Canada, right? Like by law, like that there's, there's actually French along with the English on all the stuff. That's cool. Probably costs more ink, <laughs> but, but you have to make sacrifices in life, you know? That's why like, I don't think a lot of English Canada looks at our two official languages as a positive thing. Oh. Our government spends a lot of money translating things and it puts yeah. a lot of burden on maybe like you know even small businesses in, oh. in western canada that have no french population having this expectation Actually, that's of signage really being good point. in two when, languages when we... that's interesting that's interesting i'm i'm glad that this other guy is willing to be a little more controversial and and point out some of these things that are a little uncomfortable to to talk about uh like maybe maybe canadians think it's kind of annoying if you own a business and you have to translate it in two languages and Maybe that would be more of a argument for why, hey, maybe French Canada and English Canada are different enough that maybe they should be two different countries. But and no, yeah, I could I could see that working out both ways. Really, it's really cool that they're one country. That's a really cool kind of thing that I can't think of any other country in the world that's like that. Um, but had Quebec actually voted to become independent. I guess I could have, like, I could see that, like, being a thing. And it, and it wouldn't be absolutely insane, because it, it, it's an entirely different language. You don't see that too often. A whole different, like, two different national languages, right? You don't see that too often, yeah. We were developing Hollow Taco, which yeah. is based and made in the States. But when we were thinking about possibly maybe... Maybe it comes to Canada one day. Maybe it's sold in stores. I don't know. Yes. If that were ever to happen, then legally we would have to change, change all of our packaging, change the bottle, and mm. there would need to be a French translation of everything from the word nail polish to all the ingredients, yeah. everything. Sure, so sure. that's always something to consider. I mean, in today's day and age, it's like hire somebody to do that. Google Translate. Use AI. Translating isn't like you know, that big of a deal, I would think, in today's day and age. If you're American trying to sell something in Canada. <laughs> yeah, it is. And a lot of companies want to expand to Canada and, and then, then realize, realize, oh, wow, we have yeah. to change all of that. They're right. They got to, like, change the whole packaging and stuff. That That could be annoying, like, logistically. Like getting the supply chain to print new packaging, I see. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of bad, there's a lot of different roads to go down, but I, I don't think it's fair to say that English Canada hates French Canada. Right. Yeah. I think there is a very long and complicated history. <laughs> I'm glad he got back to that, because it's like, I think at the core, that's, that question is so, like, outrageous, I think. Does English Canada hate French Canada? That's, like, even sad that someone even said that. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's people out there who do like English Canadians who hate French Canadians and French Canadians who hate English Canadians. Just like here in the United States, there's all sorts of different people who hate each other. That's just a fact 
That's just part of the human condition. But I hope that's a very small amount of people. And I think for the most part, he is correct that it is a friendly, civil relationship that's very positive, actually. I, I like that. Involved in that relationship. I mean, we can't speak for all of English Canada. We live in Ottawa, no. which is 10 okay. minutes away from Quebec. Rob, like, wow. Rob from Red Deer. We don't necessarily don't speak Robert. from him. You know? <laughs> Robert, Joe, <laughs> Bi- Billy Bob. But uh, yeah. also I think, I think proximity matters because we oh. live and work 10 minutes away from Quebec. So Oh, right. Some parts of Canada are away like all the way on the west coast would be like way far away from interacting with any French Canadians and some Canadians in like Ontario are maybe doing it on a daily basis like them. Yeah. We often cross paths with people who live in Quebec, just Mm. like they cross paths with people from Ottawa. So Mm. I don't think there's as much hostility when there's already going to be a lot of overlap. You know what I mean? Right. So we're kind of on the border anyways. I don't know how people far out, you know. Maybe French people just uh, resent that technically the queen is our head of state. (laughs) Actually, I wonder. People probably don't know that. I saw another (laughs) question. I don't think we included it. Just (laughs) right uh, asking, like, like you have a president. Is is the queen or now the king? Is the king the head of like the head of state for Quebec as well? Wouldn't it? Isn't it the head of state for all of Canada? Sorry, like you. What do you have? And yeah, uh, the most obvious answer or what most people think is like, yeah, we have a prime minister who's elected. Right now it's Justin Trudeau. You've right. probably heard of him. But technically, you know, Canada was a British colony. And hmm. even though it's in very much in a symbolic way, technically the queen is still our head of state. Right. And that's, that's why, why she's the, on our money. The queen is on our money smelling like maple syrup. You know, I don't mind having a woman. Rest in peace. Window, so. <laughs> oh. <I'll> take care. <laughs> Yeah, she seems all right. Her or, or a loon. Uh, if it was anything other than symbolic in most people's minds, though, I think a lot of Canadians would have an issue with it, right? Like, we have a right. governor general who's basically the queen. So so they're saying, like, Quebec in particular has, like, a, like, iffy relationship, like, going back in history with Britain and having British royalty on the Canadian currency is kind of like, eh, kind of like uh, a touchy sort of topic. It's representative in Canada and in a very symbolic way, like that will be the person who like has to call an election or something like that. But since the statute of Westminster in 1932 or something like that, Canada has really governed itself and has Mm -hmm. been independent and governs itself as a nation independent of Britain. I kind of like our connection to the UK and Britain though. I think a lot of people do. And a lot of people care about the. I mean, just to be clear, For Americans, like, we don't even know about this connection. Americans don't really know about Canadian history. Most Americans don't know Canada has any relationship to Britain. That would come as a surprise. It came as a surprise to me when I learned about it. To be perfectly honest, that that might be funny to some Canadians. We, we, We tend not to know too much stuff about other countries the monarchy here for some reason still well, in a weird I, way yeah i don't really care about the hysteria so what, around what do you, that what do you like about but i like um tea <laughs> <laughs> i really like i was expecting like this the, serious the, answer i love the tea uh, i prefer canadian david's tea use code simply for 20 percent off for a limited time okay i th- i think they're okay i think that's the end i think they're done talking about the topic for today and we are off to they're off to talking about tea and crumpets and Britain. That's fine. But I think I'm going to stop the video here for now and uh, just say, what an interesting topic. You know, I knew going into this, this was a got, I mean, this was a touchy topic, like talking about the relationship of different groups within a country that I have no idea about, no idea about. Um, but I, I'm glad I did today learn about this, uh, how, English Canadians feel about French Canadians, how French Canadians feel about English Canadians. I got a small, you know, viewpoint on that. Just these two Canadians who are, they're not representative of everyone's thoughts and feelings on this. Um, It would have been nice if they actually had a French Canadian here who could have spoken on the matter. Uh, Now that I think about it, that that would have been nice. Um, Because this was more like how English Canadians think English Canadians feel about French Canadians 
and we didn't really get the how French Canadians feel English Canadians view them side of this, if that makes any sense. But uh, anyway, for what this was, I enjoyed this, and this was a tricky topic, um, but I, I thought it was just fascinating because there's really nothing like this uh, here in the United States, nothing like this. Um, so I enjoyed this. If, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on this topic. Feel free, give your, give your opinion on um, how English Canadians feel about French Canada. And, and if you're a French Canadian, please uh, give your opinion on this as well. That'd be fantastic. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada and Canadian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.